Hello, in this video, I want to show you an example of using several of the techniques in SQL all at once, because it is this combination that can present some difficulty. Quick recap of the kind of things you have seen done in SQL, selecting some columns of data and picking the right ones, renaming them, getting things in order, selecting certain specific rows, doing things like summary statistics like counts and sums and that kind of things, grouping the data, getting only certain groups after you have grouped the data using having, finally joining things and how to join. There's a, a lot in all this, you know, you can stand, look behind you and see how much of a landscape you've covered. The real difficulty in this is trying to use all of these things at the same time some of the ideas that are in there are really simple. It's in combination that they get harder. Handling one technology is a little bit like picking up one thing and throwing it up in the air. But actually, most of the time, we use several of these things at the same time. And so this starts to be a bit harder. The nice thing is I can actually cut all of the embarrassing moments when I throw these things on the floor. And in reality, we handle multiple ideas at once using group and join and where all at the same time together with having and then doing that proficiently enough that you don't embarrass yourself on camera. Becoming good at a language like SQL is actually doing the simple things with enough confidence like taking one object and throwing it up in the air and not losing it some way, that you can actually use all of these things at the same time and exploit them intelligently in combination with each other. We'll see an example of actually doing this at the interface. So we're going to look at an example which is presented here. First of all, we'll break the problem down in separate parts and we look for elements of solution one part at a time. When things don't quite work, we solve things one part at a time. And we check against the data to try and find out what we need to do and to see that our partial solutions are correct. Okay, let's get Oracle to test our query here. Got the Oracle already logged in and I copied the problem in the list here. So it's the same question except written down slightly differently so that we can see the separate elements that we have to work at. The number of employees, total of all of their salaries in each department, also showing the department's name and the location. And we can work at each one of these things separately. It's something to do with the employees. So I'll start with a query. Very partial. Get everything from the employees table. Now there it is. 10 rows. Tell the computer to show enough. There we can see everything. There are 14 rows. So we've got the list of employees, but not how many of them. To get the number of them, there is a function which is count. That will count the rows. The star here gives me the whole row. So count star counts the whole rows. There are 14. Yeah, okay. I suppose I can say that I've done this. And the total of all of their salaries the total of all of their salaries. Where is the salary information in this table? I need to see the data really to understand what is happening. Where is it? There. Okay, so there's the employee number and name and their job. And aha, there's the salary. I wonder if the commission counts. I'll say the commission doesn't count. For now, I need a salary then. Well, no, because if I do this, 
then I have one result that tells me there are 14 employees, but I can't display that one result and in the same table, the salary of each. So here I need the total, which is done by doing sum. If you forget, if you had written total here, you'd get an error message like this. Okay, let's rerun this. There's my total of all the salaries and uh, well, I suppose I've done these two things now. In each department, what in each department? The department, right, the employees are in a department. I can see it here by looking at the employees department number. I need this by department, which is grouped by department, by department number, because we group by a column. Is this it? Ah, now I can see that I have a department number where there is just one employee earning 5,000, another one where there are six people earning 9,000 in total, another one with five and 10,000 something, and finally, yeah, that's right, and one more with two. I think uh, this one here is the boss. I think, but I'm not sure because I, what department, which department has got six people? I should be able to actually show the department number along with the rest. The trick if, if I group by department number, I can also display the department number. We say we group by what we're not counting. So I'm counting this one, I'm summing this one, I'm grouping by this one and I can display it. Uh, so one person here in no department whatsoever, yeah it is the boss six people in department number 30 and five people in department number 20 and two people in department number 10. Is that it? That means that I've done this. So far so good, it's going quite well, isn't it? Show the information with the department name and location. With the department name. The department name is what column? This is my data. Department name, e-name, that's the employee's name. Is there more before? Employee number. E name is the employee's name. Job manager, hire date, salary, commission, department number. Where's the department's name? It's in another table, isn't it? It's in that table called depth D name. Right, and I'm going to have to join the two. To join them, there's the department number. Right, right, okay to join them select this and this and this from amp inner join depth on amp dot depth no equal depth dot depth no So the two department numbers in the two tables are the same and that will display our data and it doesn't. Colon ambiguously defined, I'll know this problem, I've seen it before. It means that somewhere there is a colon that is in two tables and the computer doesn't know which of the two to display. There's the column that is in two table m dot depth no depth dot depth no and this says depth no and do amp dot depth no well again group by it's got depth no again and dot depth no I'm displaying the same one that I'm grouping by because I'm grouping by what I'm not counting. Okay, now I've got the, 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 the. It's the same data as before, isn't it? Why do all of this effort? Wait. In each. De 
the number of employees and the total of their salaries in each department, the, de the department name. I need to display the department name, the name, like this. Is that it? No, that's not it. Ah, uh, not a group by expression. Uh, the problem is D name, since I've just added D name. And D name, I should be grouping by D name. I should be grouping by D name because I'm not counting it. And I should be grouping by what I'm not counting. There's the department's name. Can I just stick the location in there? Location, group by location. Invalid the... It's lock. I should have checked. There. Now I've got the number of people the sum of all the salaries in each department with the department's name and location. If you don't like seeing the department displayed, you can do this. Maybe it's a neater way of displaying the same data. Well, we have a solution. It takes a few goes because each time we develop a bit of the solution we get the occasional error and we have to check the data and check our result. This says there's two people in accounting and there's five people in research and I should give it a check. Data and department table, accounting is 10 and research is 20. And in the EMP table, accounting is 10 and there's one, uh, two people. Uh, and research is 20 and there's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So my data is correct here. There's quite a few of the techniques, not quite every one of them. So I wonder if I can actually do more. How about if I get only certain groups, groups where the total of all of those salaries is, is more than this one. The total of all the salaries, that colony, some sum. more than 4,000 and that should exclude this group and there's some um, there's two groups left where's the boss ah because he's not in the department in particular the join dropped him off remember when the join doesn't actually have when there is data in one table but no matching data in the other it gets lost in doing the join but we can replace the inner join with an outer join I'll just write full outer there there it is there's you know a non-existent department with a single person that earns this much and there's the other two the having has excluded departments where the total salary is less than 4,000 4,000 well Okay, an imaginary currency anyway. Is that it? Oh, I said earlier that there was something to do with salary and commission, and we weren't taking commission into account. You know, people have commission there. Well, some do there. And maybe commission should be counted. If commission were counted, how do I do commission? I do it here, I suppose. Then I'm not going to get the same figure. I'm getting... Wait, wait, wait. How much? Uh, how much? Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Uh, ah, here it's that boss. He's not earning any commission. The commission plus his salary is nothing because the commission is nothing. Same thing with this group here. No one in this department, in the research department, earns any commission for, for that reason. It's only the sales department that we end up with a figure with. We still have a nice total, but we've got no data here. If I want to add up salary and commission, it would be better if I added up salary and commission when there is one, but then replace the commission with a zero when there isn't one. Maybe you remember the use of that technique. Instead of writing com here, I'm going to write 
nvl com comma zero okay now i see the research department has that much earnings and i see that sales department has that much earnings and there's the boss who is not in the department in particular i've put the having in because we were testing things i'll use dash dash to take it back out again just so that we can test there was a department with two people in it there it is the dash dash is what we call a command sign and it's very convenient to temporarily take out part of the query just to find out if things are working, experimenting with a query. I'll put it back in. I've got pretty much every technique here in use inside the same, uh, the, the same query. How is that for juggling? Right, let's get back to this. How do we do it? Practice. You want to become really good at it so that you can actually feel very confident with the easy work which means you can put your mind into the parts where you're not so confident then checking the data the name of that column and what data is in there and is this information correct using the tools in effect we use it oracle to learn about oracle when you're not sure about something you type a query anyway to find out to get to understand your data better, to get to understand your tools better. If you have a problem that is complicated, try to resolve a small portion of the problem and you will get it wrong. We use the failures, we use the error messages, we use the partial solutions that don't quite work as if clues to go forward from. Nothing is going to go wrong. Trust me on this. Thank you. Keep practicing. Put a thumbs up or a comment to say you've been here and whether you're finding this useful or if you have questions, I will pay attention to them in later videos. Meanwhile, stay well. I hope to show you some more of this work soon. Starts to be using group together with having and join and mailbox. I hope you enjoy seeing myself embarrass myself. Bye-bye.